Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures. I've got myself a nice, well it's not really little, but pretty big treat here. This is the third generation Seishu Sengo Uemon no Jo Muramasa, or the Full Metal Demon Muramasa. That comes to us from Good Smile Company's Motoroid line of obscure robot model kits. So, as you can see, it's quite a detailed looking figure. Do we have much on the way of the box? Not really, we got some stuff on the back for display here. You can get a better look at said robot. Kind of complex looking, got a lot of stuff going on, and for that reason, I can't wait to put it together. Let's smash the camera around. Now, all of the Good Smile kits always come kind of packaged like this. You have the inner box. As I shake the table here full of an assortment of sprues. This is the big spider thing that's going to go on its back that makes up those big thrusters. Some very thin parts there we're going to have to be very careful about. And I'm going to assume that this is probably going to be about master grade size. There's a lot of duplicate parts and it is obviously a very symmetrical kit. I'm curious about how the hands go together because, looking at the box art, it is quite the colorful thing. And eventually, it was, that's what I was looking at, hoping to see, and we got a bunch of these gold parts. Looks like we've got a couple of different swords there. A little hair thingies that hang off it, various scabbard parts, and finally, what I wanted to see the instructions. Get some space cleared off of the table here. And we'll take a look at those. Okay, so first we have the breakdown of all of the parts. You can see we've got a decal sheet. Not stickers, but honest to goodness decals and there's quite a few of them in quite a variety of colors so I hate to say it but I probably am gonna have to use those maybe I'll even put them on before I finish the video let's see I don't want to make any promises there but you can see here we've got a lot of spots where it's gonna need it on the other hand I think it really adds to the effect of the kit it's got a very different look to it, which is, I think, part of the reason why I was so interested in it. I mean, construction-wise, it doesn't look too complex. Now, I don't think the backpack is actually supposed to go into spider mode. It looks like it's supposed to stay attached to it. I only know that because I tried to do a little bit of research on where this came from. Uh, this is from a video game light novel from Nitro Plus. If you're not familiar with Nitro Plus, uh, they tend to do mostly just those light novel video games, uh, oftentimes with very adult themed elements to it. So I don't know if you're going to want to be playing those in necessarily mixed company or with children present. Uh, just something to be aware of. I know that the artist that designed a lot of these is the guy that did like a uh, Volvere and a few other various mecha series. So it's got some some nice pedigree to where these designs come from. And honestly, the last few Motoroid kits that I've built have been really solid in terms of construction. Uh, I know people have had issues. I myself have had issues with some of their earlier releases. Um, I'm hoping that that's not going to be the case here. Doesn't seem like it's going to be too top heavy. Uh, I think the biggest issues are probably going to be where everything gets attached and that big bulbous backpack thing of his. But we'll give it a shot. We'll see how things turn out and we'll be absolutely certain to show you the results. You want to see that? Sit tight. All right. The Steel Demon Muramasa has been built and I even attempted to put the decals on. Let's talk about that. So construction, I have no issues. Uh, you know, good smiles, stuff, motoroid, never had a big problem. Everything goes together nice and easily. Uh, not 
an overwhelming amount of undercuts like some of the Chinese kits that we often see. Uh, colors look nice. And then there is the issue of these wonderful decals. Now, I would like to say that I'm quite an experienced model maker and I've got quite a few years and I've got quite a bit of experience of putting them on. But you'll notice that they just don't go on very nicely. And I think part of the problem is because a lot of them were cut a lot larger and thicker than they needed to be. You can see there is excess, which I'm going to have to trim off on both sides of this. And it's double-sided, so you got to have two decals on both sides, which is kind of annoying. If you forego all the decals, I don't think you're really missing much. You've got like the cool little kanji strips on the inside of all the joints. But even those, you're going to see um, like to come off quite easily. Now, his shoulder pads were kind of a funky one in that everything needs to be glued together and there's very little contact points for each of the layers to go onto, which I thought was kind of strange. Got the big scabbard for his blade there. You got a couple extra hands and the hands all have these like weird blade knives that you can attach as well. You can't attach, they already are attached, I should say. God, these are all coming off. This is really annoying. I, you know, I put all the decals on correctly. I don't know what to say. It's really frustrating that none of them will actually want to stay on. He's got these crazy, like, wing cape things on his legs, which actually, all things considered, really don't get in the way of him keeping his stability. Uh, that crazy bulbous spider body on his back, that's what's going to be a bigger issue, keeping him upright. So I've been cheating and just using these wing binder thingies to actually help prop him up. Gets the job done. And here's part of another decal that just came off. Okay, cool. So his swords on his waist are kind of interesting in that you've got the posable scabbards. But the blades themselves are completely separate, like so. And that is the unfortunate reality of that back of his. And it's not really posable or movable or removable for that matter, it's just kind of there and you're going to have to deal with it. Um, but it does give him kind of a pretty interesting silhouette. I mean, it's it's pretty funky looking. Of course, all those little threads that you see are actually supposed to be gold according to the color layout in the instructions. So that's an interesting one. Unfortunately, this scabbard likes to fall off as well just because of the positioning of everything on the body. And if you're curious how big it is, it's got a lot of bulk to it. There's no denying that. Here is a 1 144th high grade Gundam. Something most of us are pretty familiar with. And as you can see, it does have a definite advantage in height and in price, but also just in depth and width. It's a big model all around. So, you know, unfortunately with these Motoroid kits, uh, they do tend to be on the pricier side of things. Let's just cut to the chase. Um, you are going to have to be paying a bit more for them if you're interested. But then again, they also have a lot more variety in terms of what's being made. Throw a scope dog in there for size. 30 minute sister kit. So just to give you guys a good idea of what to expect. So in terms of construction, I mean, I, I'd say I'd had it done in an afternoon. I spent a heck of a lot more time having to actually fight with those decals. The posability is nice. You're just going to be kind of limited again by the bulk of his back unit thing. And there is a 
joint down there in his waist. So if you want to put him on a display base, have him flying around doing crazy sword tricks, uh, obviously that's going to be an option for you. Uh, there's definitely going to be some post completion work if you want to get it up to snuff in terms of how it looks on the box. But overall, I mean, it's it's a pretty unique looking model. Uh, gives me a bit of an Ava 2 vibe. I'm guessing just because of the colors. Can we even see the face? The face is like really tucked in there. And I didn't glue any of the extra bits on the head down yet. But they all kind of get in the way of actually checking him out. So it's just a very different kit. If you dig the samurai theme, if you like unique profiled models, I think this is going to be a fun one, provided you can get it for a good price. Because again, I managed to, uh, I actually got mine through Big Bad Toy Store. I thought that was the fairest price that I could come across because most sellers were wanting to kick this guy up to almost triple digit prices, which is almost double the entire cost of it. I am not cool with that. I understand things aren't free to ship, but it just feels like gouging for the sake of gouging. So if you're, you know, somebody who is interested, I'd say check with Big Bad Toy Store first while they still have stock. And I would go from there. If you actually have a shop local to you that carries these for actual Japanese prices, well, congratulations. You are one of the rare few. I have yet to really come across motoroid kits, even in Japan. Uh, I did not glue these on, obviously. So, I would say go for it if it's something you're intro. And hopefully we will see more Motoroid stuff in the future because, well, they're cool kits. And I am probably not going to bother with this many of the decals the next time around. They just didn't want to fit. Especially the ones on his waist. Uh, there were like three or four all supposed to be layered on there on his armor. And they just did not want to cooperate and they all overlapped with each other and it was just kind of annoying. So it is what it is. And with that said then, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching and we will see you back here soon. Bye bye.